Welcome to In The Box Seat, I'm Ray Fewings. Well, the Adelaide Cup form certainly stood up, the Triple M Adelaide Cup form. They had the top gun in Melbourne on Saturday night, and Alan Harper, who couldn't win the Adelaide Cup, ran out an easy winner over Radley Bale. And then, of course, Mapunga Nikki went to Wentworth Park, and she gave them absolute thrashing there. So don't let anyone tell you that the Adelaide Cup field wasn't uh, one of the best we've ever had. These greyhounds are, are really excelling wherever they go. We've got a big week coming up in greyhound racing here. We've got the final of the second prelude of the 2011 Classic. Uh, and also the heats of the Gawler Gold Cup are on, uh, on Sunday. So see some very, very good dogs in action at Gawler then. Calden Mayhem went to um, the Meadows on Saturday night in the Hume Cup uh, with a kennel mate, Calden Aurora. Neither had any luck. Calden Mayhem was out the back early, flashed home late in the 600 metre event. Our guest on uh, In The Box Seat tonight is Neil Rawlings, who has a very exciting job, apart from uh, being a greyhound trainer with quite a nice uh, handy team at the moment. He's also the general manager of the Port Magpies, so lots of excitement in his life, and we'll talk to him as our special guest for In The Box Seat a little later on. What's on around Australia this week, you might ask? Well, the John Dillon Memorial Final is on uh, this Thursday night. We've got uh, the Workers' Club uh, Cup at Lismore, the solo All-Stars sprint at Cannington. Uh, Troy Murray took Aston Thomas over there last uh, week for that. And, of course, we've got the Hume Cup final at the Meadows. So there's plenty happening there. Facing the crowd. Perhaps you've been to Angle Park the last couple of weeks for either the Adelaide Cup or last week, and the snappers might have got you a photograph. Well, if it turns up on grsa.com.au as our feature of Chase's Face in the Crowd, it means that if you get in touch with uh, Greyhound Racing SA, you'll get dinner for two. So you, you'll get a repeat visit to Chase's Restaurant. It's worth a look every Thursday. You never know when it might uh, crop up with you on it. As I said, uh, South Australia this week, uh, we've got the 2011 Prelude 2, a semi-classic over 5.15 on this Thursday night. God only knows what'll win. The Hurleys have got three runners in it, but there's no standout. Even the likely favourite Basilica has drawn an awkward box, so it's anybody's race. And of course, we've got the uh, the Gawler Gold Cup, $1,750 heats on this Sunday, and uh, the final on the consolations the following Sunday. We'll all be there. It'll be a fantastic couple of weeks racing at Gawler. The Honeys have given me a few tips for the week. Wednesday, they like race five, number one, Bella Colonna. I'm in accord with them. Uh, Yvonne King's only had this runner for a little while. It put in its best ever performance here recently, running 30 and 30. I drawn the red, a little bit slow early, but should be pushing up on the first turn and does look the likely winner. And they also like race seven, number one, Crafty Lucy, over the 600. Uh, one from the Leanne Fagan kennel, who has gone over this distance before in Melbourne. Uh, but they're the two that they like. Uh, for Thursday night, uh, race two, number eight, Sikkim Tex. He's drawn his box. He's got a couple of good ones to beat, Sergeant Trigger and Airbag, a couple of outstanding dogs, but uh, the Honeys seem to think Sikkim Tex will go all right from out wide, and the first four there on race two is eight, five, four, and two. The Honeys other tip is race eight, number five, Basilica. Uh, led all the way, just led all the way, uh, when I say just led, it uh, was being galloped on from behind in the run of the first turn, but still managed to get to the middle of the track. Once it got set in the back straight, it was very strong. Uh, so it all depends on where Basilica lobs. It does have good strength and it's in the classic prelude final. The in-the-box seat tip will certainly beat in the last week. Race 7, number 5, Yesenia Bale. She's not boxing like she used to, but she thundered home on the very wet track here last Thursday night and she certainly gets a chance to make amends this week. As far as my dogs to watch, Wednesday, race 1, number 1, Zulu Miss. I like this dog. It's an interstater. It's won by 12 lengths at Broken Hill last start. Drawn the red in a moderate field, and I think it might go pretty well on Wednesday. And race five, number one, Bella Colonna. Whilst on Thursday night, race two, number five, Sergeant Trigger. Uh, Airbag beat the Sarge last time they clashed, but I think the small field, Sergeant Trigger might be better placed early. He's a very fit dog and very reliable. And the other one is race 11, number three, Gone Baby Gone. The sister to Black Ombre, two starts in South Australia so far, for two seconds, graded to win on Thursday night. Back in a moment with Neil Rawlings to feature him on In The Box Seat. Well, our guest uh, Neil Rawlings on In The Box Seat this week has a very exciting life, uh, running a football club during the week, training a few greyhounds and plenty of adrenaline rushes, I would think. Welcome to In The Box Seat, Neil. Thanks, Ray. Uh, thanks for having me. 
you're a bit like myself from my younger days. You you burn the candle at both ends. Yeah, absolutely. It's a busy time and uh, uh, the footy part of it's an exciting thing to be doing, but uh, we get great pleasure out of the dogs as well. I reckon you've only got one life if you don't use it to the full extent. <laughs> yeah, you're wasting right. it, don't yeah. you? You can sleep later, can't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sleep for a bloody long time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just tell us about the footy part. Uh, yeah. You're with the Port Magpies and now uh, the power and the Magpies are the one club. How's it all going? Yeah, it's going extremely well. Um, about uh, 12 months ago, a group of people got together and wanted to get this great club back together, um, really for the sake of the Port community, I think, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and to give us uh, an opportunity to sort of become, you know, successful again at both levels. And it's a unique club now because we've got the AFL club, we've got the SNFL club, and we go all the way down to under 13s as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a pretty unique situation and an exciting one moving forward. So bringing all the people back within the one fold. So that, I think that's very important. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, 15 or 16 years ago when this foot, you know, great footy club split up, it uh, hurt a lot of people yeah. and uh, it'll probably take longer than 12 months to get it mm. back together, but uh, slowly but surely. And uh, as you know, with everything, proofs in the pudding and it's, uh, it's about getting some results and moving forward. So, mm. yeah, no, we're really looking forward to it. And what are the greyhounds? Are they your escape uh, valve? Are they where you can get out there on the on your property and there's just you and the dogs and the stress of the footy club can't get you. Yeah, well, look, that's probably pretty true. I mean, we've been involved in the dogs for a long, long time, Ray. Uh, my mum, Glad Butterfield, goes back uh, 30 or 40 years mm-hmm. and uh, uh, mum sort of led us into the dogs, I guess, and uh, uh, my dad was a bookie, so, uh, you know, we've sort of been around it all our lives and uh, we had 15 years off between Wyala and moving back to Adelaide, but uh, when Ben turned about 16 or 17 and he was very, very keen to get into it again and... Uh, I've always loved the dogs and love having a bet, Ray. So uh, it's a terrific thing to be involved with and uh, it gets the kids uh, or teaches the kids to, you know, look after the animals and, you know, respect what happens there. And uh, to me, that's really important. And it also keeps our family together, which is even more important for me. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great, great outlet for sure. The greatest thing my father did for me when I was 13, he said to my mother, I'm going to get him either a greyhound or a go-kart. Uh, and he got the greyhound. So the next... Eight or ten years, instead of running around the streets wild, I was walking dogs with my dad. So I, I understand uh, how your son's uh, benefiting from it. Yeah, look, I think that uh, that's a fantastic thing to have happen. Um, kids these days need to have stuff to do, and uh, the dogs are, have been exceptional to Ben and my daughter Meg and uh, and my wife Tanya, and uh, we're having a bit of fun. We're getting a few winners, and uh, I suppose that's what it's all about. So, A couple of the star dogs in the kennel at the moment. Uh, you've got Hotel Alabama. And Henry Mello, I think they're brothers, aren't they? They are, yeah. They're both from uh, uh, Steve Hawkins' breed of uh, Herbie on Holly. So I mm. uh, got a relationship with Steve about six months ago. Mm. And, he's the uh, Queen Lauren man, yeah, the broadcaster. Yeah, yeah he's the mm. Queen Lauren man and uh, uh, become pretty good mates with Steve and uh, uh, through some business. And, um, yeah, we've got this opportunity and uh, we sort of have, you know, grabbed hold of it. We've got a great owner in uh, Debbie Stupos from mm. uh, Wyala. And, uh, yeah, she's been sensational and given us the opportunity to have a couple of decent dogs in the kennel, so it's been great. They can both run, and uh, you got down to the 30 with both of them. Uh, uh, were they expensive? Uh, no, uh, Hotel Alabama cost Deb four grand, so yeah, that's uh, all right. it was a great buy. Um, Henry was a little bit dearer than that. He, he was up around the 10 mark, but... Um, uh, they think uh, Hotel Alabama is a better dog, mm. uh, better motor, but uh, he had an injury, uh, had an Achilles strain. Um, but Ben and I worked on it for a couple of months before we raced him here, and uh, he's been as good as gold. So uh, um, Henry looks to be, it looks to have stalled a little at the moment, Ray. He's, he's reliable. Uh, he's reliable. He's consistent. Um, sometimes misses the start, but mm. uh, that's that's hurting him at the moment. But uh, he's a thirty twenty dog around that mark. Um, and look, uh, you know, he's going to win a couple more. So you know, we're happy with the way he's going. So. Hotel Alabama was very impressive winning at Gaul the other day. Have you set him for the Gold Cup? Uh, no, we're not going to the Gold Cup. We're actually going to step up uh, Hotel Alabama up to the 600s. Well, he has one over, the, I think, in Melbourne? Yeah, he's one over the 650 or 640 mm. or something like that. So, um, And Steve tells me that uh, he's a much better dog over the longer journey. Mm. So uh, the ambition will be that we'll try to step him through to 700 because obviously the quality of dogs, barring Cowden Mayhem and... Uh, you know, a couple of others. Uh, it's not that strong, so hopefully we can get him up to that and he's competitive there, so mm. that's the aim. I thought you had a good one. You had a Premier Fantasy dog I thought was going to make the grade, but he hasn't gone on. Yeah, look, uh, that's a Premier Strike you're referring mm. to. He won last Sunday, uh, Friday at Gawler uh, in a low-grade race and won well. Um, he, still, a, still a hope to get there? Yeah, he's still a bit of a hope. We, um, the, the issue was he, uh, he tore the sheaf off a tendon mm. and, uh, you know, it really cost him, right? And so uh, I suppose it's, it's patience and time. And uh, with that injury in the left wrist, it caused him to favour a little bit. So we sort of pull up a bit sore in the right yeah. wrist. So it's a constant maintenance thing. But, 
Look, he's a fantastic animal and, uh, and a great shame this happened because uh, the port directors bought him. Mm. Uh, so for my own sake, I need him to be okay. <laughs> and uh, no, look, those guys are fantastic, Bruce McFarlane and Trevor Tealy and those boys. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still hopeful that he'll come good and win some more. So uh, he's in here Wednesday against your tip of the day. So mm. let's hope we can knock you off. Well, I hope you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and how many in the team at the moment? Uh, there's about... Um, Seven or eight out there at the moment. Mm. Um, we've got, uh, I think, four or five racing consistently. Uh, we've got a little pup called Mighty Chaos who uh, shows some ability. He's gone 30, 28 here already. She's only 17 months old. Uh, but she's just having a little break now, so um, she'll be off for a couple of months. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a group of youngsters that we've bought. We've tried to buy the best breeding we can. Uh, and now with getting involved with Steve, that gives us another opportunity. There's uh, some more Queen Lauren's up for grab shortly, Ray, but he tells me they're about 12 and a half grand yeah. or so, so uh, not sure that one of those will slip into the yard, but I'd love one. So, uh, nice. But, yeah, it's great. Might have to win a premiership or two before you get your bonus for them. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So uh, that's uh, probably the way it should be, I suppose. Well, thanks for talking with us today. It's, uh, it's, I've sensed your enthusiasm and, and your keenness, and uh, obviously you need that if you're going to be involved with a footy team because it's a pretty tough-going uh, market out at the moment. And uh, let's hope you have a bit of luck with the dogs too. No worries. Well, thanks very much for having me, Ray. Appreciate mm. it. That's Neil Rawlings, and we do thank him for being uh, our guest on In the Box Seat uh, today. Of course, uh, the great racing continues around Australia. The uh, the shootout's not that far away as well, and uh, the great chase continues in Melbourne. So plenty of opportunities to back a winner on Greyhounds. Catch us on Hot Dogs for Breakfast on Wednesday morning, uh, 5 RPH, 8 through till 9, or just simply go straight to grsa.com.au and get all your winners from there.